welcome to another Nolzer's Marvelous Tutorials uh, with Realmsmith. Uh, today we are going to be painting a monster. Well, <laughs> they're all monsters, but a monster of a mini today. Today is actually the Frost Giant mini, um, which I believe um, and I'm very convinced actually that it was modeled after Harshnag, uh, who appears in uh, Storm King's Thunder. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to try and take a big chunk out of him if we can. Uh, let's hope that we can do that. Uh, and if not, we will extend it over two separate uh, sessions um, because he is a really big creature um, and uh, there's a lot of um, surface area to cover. So we are gonna start on him today. Uh, we're gonna start on his blue skin. I am alone tonight in the studio. Um, so Joel is not here. Um, and so I will be responding to chat and all of that really fun stuff. So if you guys have any questions, make sure that you are active in the chat, uh, that you ask them, hello, Naroon, welcome back, sword days, nice to see you. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments or even thoughts on your own uh, methods of painting or what you've done uh, with your own, that would be awesome. Uh, just uh, sound off in the chat and we'll be chatting the whole time uh, as we go. Uh, to start off, uh, the tools of the trade that we will need for tonight, of course, is the Frost Giant Miniature by WizKids. Um, we'll need some Vallejo brushes. Uh, we have the brushes for miniatures here, which has like a zero, a one, and a two. We have a Vallejo dry brush, a glass cup of water, some paper towel, a paint palette. And then as well, once we get to the um, base, we're going to need some grass tufts. Now, we may not get there tonight, but when we do get there, we'll be ready to go. Tons of paints to cover off here. Uh, again, this will be available VOD on YouTube later, um, but let's go through them really quick. So we have the extra opaques. We have a heavy blue, a magic blue, electric blue, glacier blue, dead white, blue wash, heavy brown, bone white, sepia wash, and off white, and then heavy sienna tan, black wash, leather brown, plague brown, heavy blue gray, stone wall gray, gunmetal silver and then for the first time we'll be using some of the Vallejo environment effects and this will be the snow effect. All right so we're going to dig right in really really quick um, just before we continue make sure that you follow us on uh, the Twitch. We are on D&D's uh, Twitch tonight uh, as we are every week as well as on the Realmsmith uh, Twitch as well. You can also check us out on all the socials at Realmsmith TV. There will be a VOD version of this afterwards so that you can gather the paints if you can't if you don't have them and the mini if you don't already have it in hand and watch it later and then follow uh, the, the steps that you need to later to join us and figure out how to paint this awesome frost giant miniature. Now before we start let's open it up to the frost giant page. There's a good look at the general Frost Giant. Really awesome. Uh, we're going to go for this kind of bl pale blue skin with a bit more of a rich blue under it. Um, and then Harshnag's got a magical weapon, so I'm going to teach you how to do some magical glow effects, as well as the base and all that fun stuff with the snow effects as well. I've got some seasonal allergies, folks, so just bear with me. They are CR8, um, and we're running Storm King's Thunder currently. Uh, in our uh, uh, Sentinels of the Storm campaign. Uh, we play live, actually playing live tomorrow night, 7.30 Eastern time. You can watch it, but we're almost done this book. It's an awesome book um, from D&D, and we're very excited to do that. Of course, I want to thank our partners as usual, Vallejo for all the paints that we'll be painting the mini with tonight, and of course, WizKids for this incredible mini, and of course, D&D for creating the lore and the story behind all of this wonderful stuff that we love to dig into. All right, so... Starting right off, I think we're going to start with the skin. So we're going to go with heavy blue. Heavy blue is an extra opaque paint. Uh, and the extra opaque paints are basically like heavy paints. The way that works is that um, they go on in basically one coat. If you're uh, generous with it, <laughs> um, I do uh, dilute them just a touch, just so they flow really nicely, but not too much because you defeat the purpose of a heavy extra opaque paint if um, you don't do that. So let's get some heavy blue on our brush. You can probably hear Bruno, the tavern dog in the background here. He's coming to join us and watch what's going on. Hey buddy. All right, so starting off again with a, this is a number one Vallejo uh, Torre brush. This is a rough brush. You can see it's kind of flayed out on the end a little bit. Uh, not the best brush for detail. Uh, actually not even the best brush. I've been using this one a little too much. For, uh, for this anyways, 
but we're going to get in there real nice. Now, we don't even have to care too much, folks, about getting onto the areas that we um, are going to paint later because we'll just paint over them. And we're going to use a lot of heavy paints for, for a lot of the base coats tonight, uh, so you don't have to worry too much about coverage in that way. You know what? This brush has had it. We are going to get another one. Again, excuse the sniffling, seasonal allergies, and hey, DC, de Classer, DC Lasser, how's it going? Welcome. I don't think I've seen you here before. All right. Where's everybody from? First of all, make sure that you sound off in the comments. All right. So, water that down a little too much, but we are going to go ahead and. You just want to get right in there. This blue is going to create a really nice base coat, undercoat for all of the skin on the mini. We got the bicep there. Go in with the hand. Again, not, not worried too much about getting the areas around it because we will be painting over those later anyways. The only time you really have to worry about that is if you're using a super dark color, like a dark gray or a black or, or really dark brown, and then you want to paint over later with a lighter color, then you want to be a little careful because that gray primer uh, will show the light color better than a dark base coat. Okay, nice and easy. Don't want to go too thick because we don't want to muddy up all of the wonderful detail. And we'll go ahead on this arm. Merciful DM, hey, how's it going? Hey, George, 15,000, how's it going? Hope you guys are having a wonderful Sunday. It is toasty warm here in Toronto this weekend. It's been an incredible weekend. Spent a lot of time in the backyard. Had a pool party last night with some friends. Uh, and Bruno is snorting in the background here. Just going at his paws. He's got seasonal allergies. My dog's a vegetarian, believe it or not. Um, he's on vegetarian kibble. And we're on a... We're kind of doing a... Um, elimination diet right now to find out what his deal is but the poor guy goes at his paws so if you hear any weird sounds in the background it's just my puppy not really a puppy he's four but i call him my puppy all right almost done that go in around here Again, with these extra opaque paints, you want to make sure that you give a solid base coat. They usually cover in one coat, at least I find, and that's what they're designed to do. They do deliver on that, but it's got to be a, you know, a decent coat. If you water it down too much, it will absolutely, like you can see here, really solid here. Here, I diluted it a bit much, and we're getting some where you can see basically the primer. Uh, of course, all these WizKids minis come pre-primed. All right. Now I'm going to switch to a bit of a smaller brush. Valdemar16 says, Hi, I'm from Nova Scotia, but working in Northwest Territories. Wow. That's crazy. Nova Scotia, man. I am so hooked on the Curse of Oak Island. I love that show. I don't know if any of you guys have heard that on the History Channel. But, like, they have this, like, sunken treasure. Or, uh, sorry, buried treasure that people have been trying to find for, like, I don't know, 100 years. And nobody has yet. And a couple brothers have gotten together and are now searching for it. Check it out. Curse of Oak Island on History. It's pretty awesome. All right. So, base coat done on the... Skin. All right. Any other Canadians or uh, who else is who else is watching tonight? Where else are you guys from? We usually get a lot of people from like Australia. We got some some people from Russia a couple weeks ago. All right, rule of thumb for me when I'm painting any mini, especially a large mini like this, is I want to try and get the um, the deepest recessed areas painted or base coated first. 
The reason I do that is because then when you're painting the higher areas, you don't um, gunk up by trying to get into the kind of the lower areas there. Um, so we're going to move from heavy blue, and I think we're probably going to start doing the, the metal. The thing with metal, too, is when you're when you're dry brushing metal, it like the flex kind of go everywhere. So I'm going to do that first. So then when we're painting over the larger areas, or sorry, the higher areas, um, that we don't we can cover up those flex of dry brushed metal afterwards. So we're going to go with gun metal. Bring up some gun metal here. Once again, with every bottle that you pick up, you give it a nice shake. Norway, welcome, Narun. I don't know if I knew that, Narun. What time is it in Norway? All right. I am sorry for all the sniffling, folks. It's got to be annoying. Eleven o'clock p.m. in Norway. Well, hopefully we won't go too late here. We have two hours, and we typically, like I said, try to get a mini done in two hours. Uh, this mini is a beast, so um, I'm not sure we're going to do that tonight. There's a large mini with a lot of areas that need to get done. So I am using, this is actually a dry brush, uh, this Vallejo brush, but it's a big wide brush. Um, and I like to use it just because I get more mileage more mileage out of my paint, more coverage in kind of one stroke. Um, and at this stage, I'm not too worried about like about making too many mistakes and overbrushing. So I'm just going to use my large brush here, cover all of these. There's a plate here, his groin area. Use that, and then all of the chainmail. There's some plates on the side I'm also going to cover here with gunmetal. Once we're done the gunmetal here, we're going to go ahead and um, use a black wash once this is all dry. But you want to make sure when you use washes that all of your coats like that are under it basically are dry first, or the ones that you want to wash. You want to make sure they're dry because otherwise you get... Um, Kind of the colors mixing together and running together, and that's just no good. Then you get like this milky kind of wash. You don't want that. I'm gonna try and get under here. Sorry, harsh dang. Um, call it the undercarriage. All right, there we go. Okay, brilliant. Now, there's a difference here. So this is chain mail through here, which is really cool. But this is like a, a banded sort of um, padded area. That's not chain. Up here it's chain. At least it appears to be. But down here is not chain. So I think we're probably going to paint that a little something different. I think. Hmm. We'll figure that out when we get there. Now, harsh nag in the lore wears plate. And so all of these sort of areas here. Okay, now I want to be a little careful now. I don't want to mess up the blue I did. So I'm going to switch from the larger brush back down to a number one, just so I can get in these areas without messing up the blue areas we've already painted. Nirun has a question. When do you use which washes? Base coat, light brown as skin color? Or uh, do I use black wash, skin wash, flesh wash, or sepia wash to get the best result and why? Great question, Nirun. And honestly, the answer is a little com more complex than you'd imagine. Um, there isn't really a an answer for that. I mean, um, I have kind of go-tos that I use. So if I'm doing a chain mail or a, a metal of some sort, um, I would definitely go to a black wash sometimes. <laughs> and the reason I say that is, you know, if, if we're doing like guards or people who kind of take care of their armor, that's fine. But then if you're, if you're doing like goblins, then, a, then an umber wash or even a sepia wash sometimes looks nice over, over chain because then it gives it this kind of rusty, dirty look, um, which is really cool. So it really honestly depends on kind of the look that you're going for. 
uh, and what you're trying to accomplish in the end. With uh, flesh wash, of course, I'll use a f uh, with with flesh. I'll use a flesh wash. But if it's a zombie and I'm using flesh, then maybe I'll use like a either a black wash or a gray wash sometimes. Um, even with a blue or a red, I find that the red wa red and blue washes are too uh, light or similar to the color, so I'll use a black wash. Sometimes in a blue, in a red, I'll use a blue. Um, you would definitely want to be complementary in your choices um, when you do that for sure. Okay, so in this. For example, in all these kind of leather areas that are layered here, we want it to be interesting. So we're going to kind of use a bunch of different washes with just two or three colors to kind of get something really, really cool out of that. And then that way it looks like different materials because you're using different washes on it. We're also going to go ahead and do his axe. Now this, in the lore, he has something called Gert's Great Axe. So this is his great axe. He's got a hand axe here too that matches. So we're just gonna do a uh, gunmetal here as a base coat. And then um, I mean it's a magical weapon. So I'm debating on whether or not I want to do the haft kind of a wood color. The haft being the, the the kind of the grip area. If I want that to be a wood color, or if I actually want it to be all metal, I, I haven't decided yet. Maybe you guys can sound off in the comments. Let me know what you guys think. Should we do the haft? So the grip part that you hold on the axe, should we do that um, metal being a magical axe? Gert's great axe has some really cool. And his plate mail is actually a plus, I think, three plate mail. So his, his armor is actually magical too. So we're going to do... Uh, you can see these runes on his armor here. I think I'm going to actually make them glow a little bit. As well as the runes on his axe. But just in case I decide to make it all metal, I am going to go ahead and paint the haft metal. Although, you know what? That blue isn't quite dry yet, so I'm not going to be able to do all of it. Bruno is making all kinds of sounds under the table over here. Sorry, guys. My nose is running really badly. Oh, he is not liking what's going on outside. What is it, boy? Should we fall down the well? That's a, that's a joke that just aged me. All you Lassie fans out there. Now again, when you're when you're base coating, just make sure that you're going all around the miniature like this and just looking at all angles because it's so often. Now this one's not as spindly as some of the dragons, and not as many kind of uh, obsc uh, not obscure, um, yeah, obscured areas. Um, so you don't have to worry too much about missing areas, but. You definitely want to kind of go over it and then uh, twist it around and make sure that you got all the nooks and crannies. Add some more gunmetal here. Just going to check in it real quick on the D&D channel. This is what happens when I don't have a producer with me. Can't quite. All right. Let's see. The other thing, too, is because it's plate mail, you imagine plate mail would be metal, right? But then again, thinking about it, I thought, you know what? Not necessarily, because, you know, in some cases, me plate metal could be covered in leather, right? Especially if Harshnag is a frost giant in the northern reaches of the Sword Coast. He'd probably not want cold metal on his skin, maybe. I mean, being a frost giant, he can handle it, I'm sure, but... 
Um, I should have glued his arm in here. It's starting to wobble a little bit while I'm painting, but, um, but yeah. So I mean, um, plate metal isn't necessarily mean that it's got to be metal. And so I wanted to do this metal, but this actually looks like it's maybe it's metal. Let me see. Look at the little back. This kind of looks like leather more than metal so i think i'm going to go with more of a leather look and then that way it would also he also work just as a regular frost giant that has kind of hide armor which i believe they do all right get in here and i think we might be done all the metal parts yeah, I'm not going to do the metal parts like the rings because we'll do that after. Um, there is a bit of metal around. I'm going to do kind of the rim on his knee pads metallic as well as here. So it hints the, at the fact that it's it was it's metal armor kind of covered in leather. You know what I mean? So we'll do the rim around his knee pad like that. And I think that's it. I'm going to go around the mini, look at it all real quick. And I actually wonder if I should do this rim around his armor, kind of a metal as well, just to insinuate that there's, and even around these kind of, yeah, I'm going to go around some of these as well to insinuate that there's plate. Uh, I'm going to do that later. And kind of some of the final stages, that's what I'm going to do. All right. All right. Okay, so, oh, you know what? I missed a little bit in here. See? little bit of area in there all right next we're gonna go to heavy sienna now heavy sienna is going to kind of be the majority of the leather armor uh, or the base coat rather for the majority of the leather armor on the mini um we're gonna just shake it up real good Sienna for you. Again, heavy sienna is an, is an extra opaque color, so you're going to get really great coverage in very few uh, coats. So we're just going to go hardcore on this right around here. He's got like bone on his shoulder here. We're going to, we're not going to worry about overbrushing on that area, but we're not focusing on it. That area I just painted is not going to be heavy sienna, so we don't have to worry about that. Even though I did that, that's fine. We're going to use leather brown on that later. Then here. Now, I am going to be a little careful with his beard because I do want his beard to be a lighter color, and it's just going to be a pain in the butt to cover this kind of dark brown color that we're using on his armor. And this heavy sienna is a really rich color. Um, in all the pictures of Harshnag, his armor is pretty... Um, his armor's pretty dark, almost like black, kind of grayish in tone. So um, we're going to use washes to kind of bring down some of that, some of the, the, the warmth in, the, in this. So these shoulder areas, I'm going to do leather brown after. So those meet there. So to give it a bit of contrast, I think I'm going to do these heavy brown. So kind of these patches here, a heavy brown color. 
sorry, not heavy brown, heavy sienna color, I should say. Like that. And then I'm also going to do this other one back here as well. I don't have any chat here, so if you guys are in the chat, if somebody doesn't mind, just... I don't know if my chat's mal malfunctioning, but I've lost the chat. I've got an ant on me here. It's that time of year. And then I think I'm also going to do his back. Well, I guess I could have done that. No, we'll do that. Have you seen it as well? Not worry too much about overbrushing, like I said. In and around there, and then just make sure that you get right in the corners there. And again, you, you can see why we're doing this area first. If you paint this area and then you're trying to jab the heavy sienna in there, it's really going to muck up that area. We're not worrying about the, the edges because we're going to do those in like a metal uh, gunmetal later uh, to make it look like the plates are actually just covered in leather. Um, okay, so that's that. Uh, his pants are also going to be this color. So um, I think I'm going to use a bit of a smaller brush. Go back to a number one. Load that, and then I'm going to go in here and just carefully now. So in this case, now we've got like, we're working on a third color on this mini. So we want to make sure we don't mess up the base coat. Now at this stage, it's okay if we kind of do. It's not a huge issue uh, because you can go back, and because we're only on base coats, you can just go back with the base color. Cover it all up. I did say that I was going to do all of the dry brushing in the metal before I did this. So maybe we'll go and do that. I just wanted that metal to dry in time. Sometimes getting under these minis is tough. Like that. All right. That worked. I think I'm also going to... I like to actually, so in a lot of painted versions of this, I've seen that people have done all of this rim metal. And for me, I would imagine that it would actually be um, the border of the, of the armor would actually be kind of leather so that it could actually move and shift as he did, just like chainmail is supposed to do. If it was like solid metal, it, would, it wouldn't bend at all. So you couldn't move very well if that was the case. I actually like to, when I'm painting these, especially with armor, I actually like to think about, and this is the nerd inside of me, um, I actually like to think about how things would, um, like how the leather would work and and how everything would kind of move together if it was kind of real real armor all right make sure my chat is working here okay uh Try to be careful not to hit all of that gun metal that we have under here, but also making sure that I have a decent base coat where I need to. I wonder if you guys can actually hear Bruno, my dog, snoring in the background. Let me know in the chat if you guys can actually hear him because it's pretty funny. We're still on heavy sienna here. I'm gonna, even though I'm not sure, I'm going to um, just base coat all of this under here in heavy sienna, along with his pants. I mean, nobody's really gonna see under here, unless he dies, and then you put him prone on the table, and then 
He goes, like, you didn't paint the undercarriage. Narun says Bruno just want to join the stream <laughs> like last time. Narun, did you uh do you actually hear him? Do you hear him uh snoring in the background there or is it pretty quiet? He he snores so loud, folks. Like so loud, like human loud. It's really kind of freaky. Okay, nope. Narun says no. Nope. All right, good. Maybe uh maybe I will do the edge kind of that um that leather brown because I have a lot of sepia under here and the leather brown will break it up a bit better than um than the uh heavy sienna would. But the heavy sienna is just a nice dark rich color for these under areas that you just basically want a lot of shadow you don't necessarily want to show up right but as you can see there's a lot of material to cover here which is probably why we're going to need two sessions for this guy see how much we get done but most most likely that is going to be the case So you guys all know, uh, we will be in Origins. I will be there um, this coming Wednesday to Sunday, and we are holding uh, masterclass paint sessions, um, events, two a day, sorry, three a day, except for Sunday. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday, three a day, two on Sunday, and we'll be painting all kinds of large uh, D&D WizKids Nolzers minis. Um, it's an extension to the show. So this show will be live at Origins coming up next week. Um, and while we're at the show, we'll actually be live streaming all of the sessions to our Twitch channel. So if you guys want to tune in, if you can't be there live, uh, if you are there live, please make sure you guys stop by the booth. Realmsmith has a booth right beside the Vallejo booth. In the Vallejo booth is where we're going to be uh, holding the tutorials and the classes. So... Um, if you're looking for us, that's where we'll be. Uh, but Realmsmith has a booth right beside the Vallejo slash WizKids booth, or the Vallejo and WizKids booth, not slash, they're separate booths. Um, but we'll be holding a uh, uh, paint classes there with special guests, uh, hosts. Um, Adam Loper from Tabletop Minions is actually going to be hosting the midday ones, the one to three, uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Uh, and that just gives me a bit of a, a break painting um, Painting for six hours a day isn't easy. Um, I kind of want to make these bone to break up the um, chain mail. I wonder if I should do that. I can decide that later. Okay, so we've got heavy sienna. All his pants are heavy sienna. Missed a little area here. Again, as you go through, you'll do the same. Realize, oh no, I missed that part. I'll go back. Uh, oh, I got to do his his boots. The bottom of his boots, heavy sienna. I missed the front here of his pants. And under here as well. Make sure you rotate that mini. And I know this part, I was going to base coat this guy before we started, but I just figured I think it's important that you guys kind of understand as well. Um, or get some insight into why we paint, um, like color choices and all of that kind of stuff as well. And a lot of that work, even though it's the most daunting aspect, um, oftentimes, it's also the um, one of the most important. Actually, is the process of kind of choosing base coats and all of that stuff. Uh, I am also going to base coat these knee pads in heavy sienna as well. Narun's asking what everybody in the chat is painting at the moment. Painting Fomorian, very nice. I think you asked if we would could do a Fomorian this week. Um, have you already painted one of the uh, Frost Giants, Narun? 
I did a Fomorian. Uh, we we did a Fomorian for one of our PAX Unplugged master classes last year. Last PAX. We're probably going to be at PAX again this year. So stay tuned for that. Okay. Okay, that knee pad is done. And I'm going to try and get under. Spear minute to minute four, mint four, spear mint fur. I <laughs> got it. Is uh, reading all these names is always so fun. Um, he said he's painting an orc. Oh, nice. You're getting the young green dragon in the mail. Uh, spear mint fur. As you probably know, we did the young green dragon last week. Uh, the VOD is on Twitch, folks, for that, on our Twitch channel. Um, and it's on the D&D YouTube. Uh, it's been so crazy getting ready for Origins that we don't have it yet up on our YouTube. But it'll be... Uh, I'll make sure to get it up this week. Game Trade, buddy. I'm assuming that's Rick. Rick from Game Trade just signed in. How's it going, brother? Rick will actually be one of our special guests. Thanks for reminding me to get back to that. Rick says, what is Origins? So Rick Ankeny from Grape Trade Media and Painting Happy Little Minis will be joining us. He is helping us paint the, oh, I just, oh, Green Dragon. Green Dragon on Saturday, I believe. Um, and Rick and I are, are, are good buds, and he's... Uh, a good friend of Realm Smith's, and we're a great, f good friend. <laughs> I said you're a good friend, and we're a great friend. Uh, we're both great friends of each other's uh, streams and and companies, and do a lot of um, uh, collaboration. So it's it's great to to have you, buddy. Thanks for thanks for tuning in and supporting the stream. It's awesome. Um, we uh, like I said, and we're trying to get me maybe on one of his shows. I don't know if I can say that yet, but we're trying to see if the schedule is going to work. Sorry to put you on the spot in the middle of the interweb. Rick says he loves the realm. Thanks, man. All right. There's a lot of heavy CN on here, folks, but what we're going to do is we're going to use washes. We're going to try to use washes to separate some of them as well. Um, I do want it to feel like if you go too crazy with colors and you add too many different colors, it looks a little cr nuts and unnatural. And so, you know, Harshneg being a frost giant would have gotten a lot of his armor and, and gear in the north. And they're not so worried about style there. Um, he did get his axe in Waterdeep, actually. Kurt's great axe was in the vault in Waterdeep, and it was gifted to, I think it was Waterdeep, and it was gifted to him um, for being a adventurer and a good frost giant. And for those of you that don't know and haven't played, spoiler warning, um, Harshnag is, is a good aligned frost giant who fights for the realm. All right. I'm also going to do this heavy sienna down here. A lot of heavy sienna, folks. We'll get through this. Make sure you get in between the ring here. Doesn't want to get in there. <laughs> Sorry, folks, if my hands cover sometimes, but sometimes we have to get certain angles, and it's difficult to do without getting in the way of the camera here. I'm sure Rick knows all about that. All right. Him and Dave Taylor have a really cool show on the uh, Painting Happy Little Mini stream. You can check that out on Facebook. You guys on Twitch too, Rick, or just on Facebook? I don't know if I've ever watched you guys anywhere other than Facebook. <laughs> Rick says he's just guessing what he paints. Well, Dave Taylor is a pro. 
and again a good friend all right it's getting going well folks it's going well i may do some gray maybe i'll make his i think i'm gonna do his belt like a dark gray color i think that would be good what do you think folks uh but I am going to do his armbands. So the leather areas on his armbands. Yeah, so Rick says they're on Twitch, Facebook, and YouTube. So that's Game Trade Media and Painting Happy Little Minis, which is a fun, fun show. Gray for a seal skin belt. Very good, Rick. Good call. I am sold now. I wasn't so sure before. Now I am sold. One of uh, Rick's homebrew kind of uh, world uh, concepts. Uh, one of his characters is like a like a like a giant. Uh, it's all about giants, right? They live in a world of giants, and uh, there's some really cool lore in one of his homebrew campaigns. Really neat. I don't know where they can check that stuff out, Rick, but very cool. I just that's what I love about D and D. I love that everybody can just do their own thing and create their own worlds and play within it. It's so awesome. Everyone just shares and there's no wrong or right way to do it. I mean, perfect world, I'm sure. Each group has its challenges. Most of them are just getting players to the table. Okay. So, Heavy Sienna on the bracers. So the leather part of the bracers... I may do the straps, the heavy brown color, just to break it up a little bit. Because as much as we don't want to choose, we want to keep our, our palette fairly succinct. So we don't want to complicate the palette too much, but you do want to create separation. If you paint a whole area one color, then you're losing a lot of the detail that goes with that object. And so, you know, if we want, if we want to, uh, to really have these kind of these straps stick out here, then we want to make sure that we use maybe a leather, a brown leather, oh, sorry, leather brown color, something a little lighter than this. This will be like a dark brown color everywhere that do it. And we're going to use tan to highlight that. Also make sure it's important that because you're painting a 3D mini, you want to get kind of the edges too, the inside edges here that I'm painting. Um, and then it really kind of closes in and makes the, makes the mini kind of look 3D the way that it should. I almost missed those edges. Top edge here. Perfect. We may just get through base coating this session, folks. We're almost an hour in here. Um, if you like maple syrup, Syrup, Netflix, and oh yeah, painting. We do have fun, Rick says, about his channel. Uh, Narun says, these realm tutorials helped me a lot to do improve my painting techniques. Thanks, man. I'm glad. And I know some people just want kind of the, the, the shorter tutorials. We just love this kind of like, you know, I think I think in some of the shorter tutorials we've done, um, I find that you we, we kind of miss the process a little bit. Like, by painting live like this, and we'll continue doing those from time to time, but um, to, to paint live like this, we actually have, what we're doing is we're solving some of our mistakes and our problems live. And so you're seeing kind of the thought process of like, okay, well, what happens when I, if I mess this up, what can I do to kind of fix it? Or, you know, where can I go to kind of get what I need to get done after, you know, even color selection. So a lot of the stuff that we edit out in those short kind of 15, 20 minute, even half an hour tutorials, you don't get the, the meat of it, uh, kind of the real time decision making, which I think is valuable too. All right. Let me think here. So we got all this kind of dark brown color in here. Really excited to do the skull. That's going to be fun. We're going to add a wash next because um, 
And maybe we'll do the wash on all of the heavy sienna parts and the metal all together because the wash takes a while to dry. And so on these streams, we try and do them as early in the stream as possible so that we can still work on those areas later in the stream. I totally missed half his bicep. Look at this. Half kind of his arm here of blue. See? That's what happens, folks. With big minis is you tend to miss key areas as you're going. The nice thing about Vallejo, though, and, and what I like about it, um, and it may not be for some, but the, the paint tends to stay wet in the palette longer. So I'm finding I use less paint because if I were to go back to this heavy blue, it's still actually wet. And that was the first paint that we started using an hour ago or just almost an hour ago, which is pretty cool that you have paint kind of active in your, in your palette that long. And I'm not even using a wet palette although I really should start. But I just find that it stays wet in the palette much longer than some of the other paints I've used, which is nice. Because it allows you to do touch-ups a lot easier without having to get more paint out. And when you use less paint that way too, you go through less paint. So you get a lot more mileage out of it. Oh, I'm so close. I'm almost done the heavy sienna in my palette, and so now I'm just... You ever been there, folks, when you're trying to, like, not ration, but, like, carefully choose the color because all of a sudden you have a certain amount in your palette and you, want to, you don't want to squirt more in your, in, your, in your palette? All right, I think that's all of the heavy sienna. I think I'm going to use the leather in his helmet in the back here, too. I'm definitely going to do that. You've got his beard here. All right. He would, he would, Rick, except that this is Harsh Nag. He's a good aligned Frost Giant. Maybe they'd be buddies. Rick says that Orion Frost is his character who would hunt this giant down and end his evil tyranny. Well, he could partner with Harshnag to hunt down frost giants across the Sorry Coast. That'd be great. Okay, so little walk around real quick. We've got metal done for the most part, except for the edges, which we're going to do later. Uh, heavy sienna down which we're going to add a black wash to now, and the blue areas, which I think we're going to start on the skin next uh, for the next kind of little while. So what I'm going to do first is add that wash. Make sure that we're good. It looks like we're good. Okay. So we're going to get, uh, what kind of wash do we want? Black wash. Now this black wash is really going to kind of darken the... Oh, before I do that, I got to go back and do what I said I was going to do before, which was use the heavy blue to get the part of the arm that I missed over here. Look at this. The nice thing about some of these minis is, look, oh, the arm comes off. I'm glad, actually kind of glad I didn't glue it on. Now, okay. That's better. All right. Much better. Okay, I'm gonna leave that arm off for now. It's gonna be easier to paint areas without it. All right, black wash. I am gonna use this Vallejo beat up dry brush for my wash because the quality of the brush doesn't matter all that much. I dilate the wash just a bit and then I am going to start to apply it to the back. You can see as soon as I brush it on, it starts to seep into the recesses and do what washes do best, which is cause create depth and contrast. Look at this, boom. 
you really start to see some of the texture. I know it's wet right now, so it's hard to see, but it brings out a lot of the texture in that leather. And this is going to take a little while to dry. It usually takes almost half an hour, I guess, some say, for a wash to dry, so which becomes a problem in a two-hour stream. So we're just going to... Even the, the, the heavy sienna in some of the areas that we're doing this to has not even dried yet. But I really like how the wash brings out the details and creates some delineation. Uh, will you be doing any tutorials using the Vallejo air paints? Yes. That is something people have been asking for. Um, and one of these days we will absolutely do some airbrushing. Uh, I'm not a master airbrusher by any stretch. Um, but, um, I do love using my airbrush. And so I would love to do a, um, airbrush tutorial. I tend to use airbrushes for, I know people use them for base coating. Um, I find it's too much work to clean the airbrush and everything for that, unless I'm doing like an army or like a lot of minis at once. Um, but I do love to use it for like object source lighting, which is like secondary light sources from magic items or, or flames or whatever. We actually used it in our Beholder series tutorial. Sorry, our Beholder tutorial series, other way around. Um, and you guys can check that out on our YouTube page. but. Um, we used airbrush an airbrush to do kind of a, the moon from the front of the monster manual. Well, we are using black wash now, not heavy sienna. Self-producing, I'm forgetting stuff. Um, but, uh, but yeah, very, very cool. For me, that's what an airbrush is great for. I'm going to, I'd like to start zenithal highlighting and things like that, but I haven't really dug in too much with that stuff. Oh, something just woke Bruno. He's not happy. So I'm just going around. And with washes again, like I just, I pour it on in one area and then I slowly kind of move it along the surface like this. You can see it kind of goes into the recesses. Really cool like and creates depth in that chain mail. Around the front, around the side piece, the undercarriage. Just make sure you get it all. There we go. And for this, I kind of want it to be not super dark, but I'd like it to be kind of beat up a little bit. I mean, Harshnag's been around a long time. He's probably had this armor quite a while. And so we want it to feel like it's not, you know, badly taken care of, but definitely used. Like he's been, he's seen some stuff in this armor. Rick says he's got to go. Great stream. Thanks, man. Yeah, I know. I got <laughs> I got a pack for Origins too, man. I haven't even started yet. I'll be doing that tomorrow. We drive out to Origins. We're actually driving because we have to take all our gear. But we'll actually be driving out on, on Wednesday morning for Origins. Hopefully get there mid-afternoon. Enough time to set up the booth. Booths. Because we have a booth and Vallejo has a booth. I'd like to get one of these guys. We have a uh, monthly encounter crate, which you guys will see the ad for in that little ad area uh, there there um and uh we ship a, a monthly um adventure in a box 5e rules um and uh i'd love to get a miniature this size into one of those boxes be awesome we haven't yet not in the f i don't think there's one in the first we have some big stuff in there but nothing this big but we're launching a new adventure july 1st and we're releasing information at Origins for that adventure. So if you're at Origins, stop by our booth and you'll get a sneak peek of some stuff. 
Um, make sure you do that. But if you're interested in those crates, you can go to our website, which is detailed here. Oh, it's not detailed there. There, look at that, crates. It's very, very exciting. It's fun for us. Building worlds is one of my favorite things to do. All right. Okay, so oh, the wash is already drying on some of the areas. That's good. You can see it's not really, I need more. I go through so much black wash, I'll tell you. It's not like I said backwash. I don't do that. That's not nice. Black wash. Is anybody else going to Origins out there? Anybody? Question on the Realmsmith crates. If you get the one with paint, do you get different colors each time, or do you end up with more of the same after a while? Um, no, we made sure that when you get the one with, with paints, that you get uh, different paints every time, so that by the end of kind of the six-month story arc, because we do six-month story arcs, uh, that you have a, like a, a decent collection of all different paints. And so as you go, so when you when you subscribe to our our, our, our uh, adventure box, uh, you get the first one, and then you get all consecutive ones. Uh, we're releasing number uh, six this month, uh, five this six this month. <laughs> um, so part six of six of our first adventure, and so you'll get number one, and you get all the rest of them. Uh, and then so basically, if you need a certain color that you didn't get that you didn't get in the first crate by the fifth crate, when you have that mini in there, you'll have everything that you need in order to paint those minis. So we've actually curated the crate specifically so that you have everything that you need as you go along to paint whatever we provide in the in the in the box. So that's kind of exciting. Totally forgot the metal on his bracers. Like a putz. So you try and batch paint kind of him and paint all the same colors, and then you realize, oh crap. I think I'm going to do these kind of magical runes too, right? Give it a bit of a magical glow. I'm going to switch over to his arm, uh, and I'm actually going to step away from the wash here and do these, do these bracers because I forgot. I don't know if I'm going to do the buckles yet. I kind of like doing that stuff afterwards, even though we're digging into this color now. I kind of like having it all done later. There we go. Oh, geez. It definitely is going to be two parts, folks. We're at 6.05, and we haven't finished base coding yet. So make sure that you follow us on Twitch. Um, and tune in. So not this Sunday. Um, we are going to rerun one of our sessions from um, Origins in this time slot next Sunday. Um, so you won't miss anything and you will have something, but we will continue this one in two weeks because of origins and the way that it sits in the time schedule. So, okay, so that's done. Needed to do that. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with some blue because I just noticed that there's some nooks and crannies here that I didn't get last time with the blue. Oh, cover a little brown over paint that I did. I want to try and get to the skin. So let's see if see if we can get there. Um, I'm going to pick this bad boy up here, and I'm going to try and do all the metal here. Again, he's got plus three plate armor, so I want it to feel magical. And for that reason, anytime there's runes, like around here and in the back here, and on his bracers, I want them to be glowing. So we're going to show you guys how to do some glow effects. Probably next, well, definitely next 
in the next part. Okay, I need some more gunmetal. Question for all of those in the chat. How many of you guys collect Nolzer's miniatures? And uh, who out there has a decent um, collection of them? And then beyond that, what's your favorite mini that you've painted from the Nolzer's uh, unpainted, uh, the WizKids Nolzer's line? Uh, the D&D &D Nolzer's line, I should say, uh, by WizKids. What, what minis have you guys painted that you've liked the most from that line so far? Love that, that kind of feedback to know. Uh, and beyond that, after this, so after we're done this Frost Giant, which will be in two parts, what should we paint next, guys, from the Nolzer's line? Any thoughts, ideas on that? Sound off in the chat. I decided to go ahead and put paint a buckle just because just because I'm the boss of me. <laughs> All right, cool. I think um, I haven't washed that yet. Um, the wash in there is looking really nice. You can see it's starting to dry a little bit, but it's, and then we'll dry brush that with silver later to give it a bit more bling on the edges. All right, um, I am going to add a wash now to the metal here on his bracers. I love that. I love how when I put the wash on, all of a sudden, all the detail comes out. It's so cool. Just so you guys know, there's a difference between washes and inks. Technically, and this is, you know, a, just a kind of layman's sort of definition i'm sure vallejo would have a more technical answer uh, but uh, a wash is intended to kind of add contrast and depth to a mini uh, i call it liquid talent or talent in a bottle uh, but basically when you brush it on um, it goes into all the recesses and just creates instant shadows it's a really easy way to create shadows on your mini without too much effort. You just kind of put it on and it magically seeps into the recesses and creates shadows just like that. How cool does that ax look already? And all I've done is put a wash over gunmetal. So simple. So simple, but you get a really cool effect already. And then when, once that dries, then we're gonna go ahead and um, dry brush it and then, like I said before, we're going to add some magical glow to it. Now, I'm going to go ahead and, even though this probably isn't totally dry yet, I'm just going to add the wash to that bracer. So it looks dry, but as I kind of brush it over, I see that it's mixing a little bit. That's okay. There. Add the bracer. And then... I haven't added any to the leather, so now just around on all the leather bits. Like that. Okay. Beautiful. So I just touched the wash area. Okay, so I'm going to let those sit. Let those washes dry, and I think I'm going to go ahead and start to, I want to do the skin, but I'm afraid that I'm going to muck it up by doing other areas. Um, you know, part of me wants to kind of base coat things all at once, um, sometimes, and the other parts of me wants to go ahead and start to add some detail. Um, forgot black wash in here. 
uh, but part of me wants to kind of finish off an area or, or all of the base coating in one part. Just to feel kind of complete, you know what I mean? Hmm. What to do? What to do? I might continue base coating, I think. Uh, Narun says, I'd love to see you paint the adult Romoraz. We did one, actually, and I recorded a tutorial and it hasn't been released yet. Um, but maybe we'll do that. Uh, um, Narun says, I only got WizKids minis at the moment. My favorite so far is the Beholder, but I'm really looking forward to the Black Dragon to arrive in the mail. Nice. Yeah, that Black Dragon's really great. All the young dragons from WizKids in, in the recent wave are pretty awesome. Pretty, pretty awesome. All right. I'm going to go to Leather Brown, folks. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to continue base coating, and we may still have time to do some blending and layer effects. So we've got heavy brown here. And we're going to use that as a base coat for all of the leather areas. And that's going to be all of the... Um, Basically, it's the secondary color I'm using for the armor. So these here, and again, everything, all the armor, I think I'm going to, uh, all the metal areas, I'm going to line with a um, metal to make it look like they're pla metal plates under there. And then all of the leather ones, sorry, yeah. The leather ones, I'll, I will border with metal, and all the metal ones, I'll border with leather. Because these plates would have, like, metal areas that, again, with Harshnag having plate mail. I've actually played Harshnag a lot um, as an NPC, because he is in Storm King's Thunder and our, our Sentinels of the Storm group that were... Um, playing tomorrow night on our live stream. Uh, he, uh, he's a, a, a regular NPC, or was for a while. I don't want to give any spoilers uh, for people who haven't played Storm Kings, but he um, isn't a part of the game currently. And uh, anyways, the <laughs> characters really kind of grew to like him. He is um, he's kind of a good-hearted quiet um, frost giant and I, I, I when um, when I play him I use a I don't know pseudo Russian accent I play him like this this is Horshneg's voice hello everyone it's time to bust some giant skulls the players seem to get a kick out of it maybe they're just saying that because you know being a just got some on other areas. Oh, oh well, I'll fix that up later. I'm trying to rush through here and I'm not paying care. Looks too wet. Let's see, sometimes though, you can actually sop up areas that you mess up by um, by just using a, a dry brush. And just pull. even the brush that you're using, if you wipe off the paint and then quickly kind of apply it to the area, it'll suck up or soak up the the paint that you went over. Or if you just have like a dry brush handy on the side just for kind of cleaning. Man, this is this is not. See, I'll pick up a dry a clean brush here and I'll just wipe away the messy area that I just caused.
some more heavy brown in here. Oh man, don't know why it's so wet. I think I diluted that area too much and now it's, see? Solving problems live, folks. Live as they happen. So that is going to be heavy brown. That is going to be heavy brown. All of this kind of like banded uh, padding, padded leather area is also going to all be that color as well. And then we're going to sepia wash it, and then we're going to dry brush it with leather brown is the plan. I just like using this, uh, this heavy brown because it gives it such a good solid coat. Now you can see it's kind of heavy in this area, so I'm just going to brush over it. Once I've deposited all of the paint that's on the brush already, I'm gonna just run it over these areas to make sure that you're not I'm not hiding all the awesome detail. Right. And there's like more in here too. And there's a strap there. So cool, man. The detail on these minis is unreal. So affordable too, okay, for their size. Okay, all right. So that is all of those leather areas. Um, I think I am gonna Later, I might actually um, kind of add a, add a border on these with the heavy sienna color. That might be the plan. Just to give some delineation in there. But all of that bordering I can do after. Once all kind of the base coats are down and kind of the mid-tones are added, then I can decide what needs a bit more kind of exaggeration or like I said, delineation. Cool. All right. Um, all right, so that's that. I also do need to do the skull in this color. We're going to also use heavy brown to base coat the dragon skull. So Harshneg wears, as legend dictates, Harshneg wears a white dragon skull on his head as a helmet. Freaking cool, right? As some of you know, may know giants and dragons are sworn enemies. Metallic or chromatic, it doesn't really matter. I mean, Harshneg would probably get along well with metallic dragons, being a good aligned, but for the most part, dragons and giants have been at war for ages. Brown on the skull. For those of you that may have just tuned in recently are still watching with us, um, the VOD for all of our tutorials appear on the D&D YouTube. Um, and on uh, the, the uh, our YouTube, uh, youtube.com slash realmsmith, or on Dungeons and Dragons YouTube channel as well. They host, they, they upload our VODs after the fact as well. <laughs> Tim, who is our operations manager, uh, says that his son says hi. James, hey James. How's it going, James? <laughs> So 
they're so young they're gonna think I'm like a movie star all right at least that's what I'm gonna tell them all right my kids are old enough they know better my kids are teenagers all right well, it's getting there folks look at this he is he is a monster this guy Literally and figuratively. All right. Um, again, trying not to get on the blue, even though we're going to be... I think that's part of it as well. Is this part of the... I think this is the jaw coming down. Um, sometimes you just guess at like what part of the mini is supposed to be painted and what isn't. I'm pretty sure this is the jaw. So I'm just going to paint it like that. There. Boom. And it comes down on the side of the jawbone. It's pretty neat. Um, and then it, there's like a tooth. Oh, I didn't even notice that before. It's like the open jaw of the dragon is kind of is the chin strap. Come on. That is so cool. And that's what this is too. This is the tooth, one of the teeth kind of coming out. It's so awesome. Schwarzenegger is a, you know what? A bad mamma jamma. All right. It's a lot of kind of little detail work, so I want to make sure. Again, if I get it on the beard, I'm not too worried about it, but I am doing a light beard, obviously, like a white beard, as is typical for a frost giant. So I want to make sure that I don't give myself a hard time by adding too dark a, a base coat under it. So I think I got that right. But you know what? What is right? It doesn't matter. You want Harshnake to have pink skin? Do what you want to do. Live life. All right. Make your own rules. And then the bone extends out onto his. And again, this all looks the same, right? But we're going to use different colors in the midtones and highlights and even the washes on this to make it all pop and look unique and different. Still using heavy brown, folks. There are big areas to base coat on this mini. Big areas. How many of you out there are playing Storm King's Thunder currently or have? And how did you guys feel about it? And were, or do you guys have any funny harsh night stories, actually? Is there anyone out there that has like a cool story of how harsh Nag did something or killed something or... Also, I think I'm getting all the chat here, folks. I'm on our, our channel. I'm not sure if when D&D hosts it, if we get all of the chat on our channel. Maybe, Tim, if you're still watching, you can tell me um, if all of the chat comes through here as well. That'd be great to know. I should have checked that out before I found out, but I wasn't sure. So I just want to make sure that I'm getting all of the questions and comments that are coming through on both channels. Storm King Thunder has been great. We're how many episodes? I can't remember how many episodes we played before we went live, but we basically just started playing in my old backyard, um, and it was fun, and awesome. And then I created this like man cave in the garage. Uh, it was like it looked like a tavern in our in our early play sessions, live sessions. You can see it, and um, Joel, who plays DeGraff in his one of my business partners said to me, hey, um, you know what? You guys should start, we should start live streaming this. This set is crazy. So we did. And now we are 30, I want to say 34 episodes. 
tomorrow night might be 34 episodes in which is crazy each episode's three hours so do the math that's a lot of it's a lot of storm king's thunder but it's been really fun really fun there we go okay i think that is a decent base coat except for the areas that i missed like that and that but i think that's a decent base coat for the helmet the skull cool does that look um are there any other areas that i want to base coat with heavy brown I don't think so. I'm wondering if I should do the fur heavy brown as well. And then do, you know, I might just do stonewall gray and then do a sepia wash over the fur. Kind of like I'm going to do on the skull, but a little different because it'll be gray rather than bleach bone. Hmm. No, you know what? I think we're going to. So we're going to do some more heavy brown on all of the on all of the fur. I'm going to use a bigger brush and dilute it a bit so I can really get into here. So I'm just jabbing I'm using a, an old dry brush that's kind of not usable for any sort of detail work anymore uh, that I've kind of beat up dry brushing. I'm just going to jam the paint into the recesses to make sure. And one technique for this is I literally kind of like stipple it almost on. So I get it in really, really tight, kind of push as much as I can, and then brush over it lightly to take off any access surface paint. That's there. You know what? That's a nice base coat, actually. That's going to be a nice base tone for the fur. And it'll balance nicely with the helmet if we're using that technique. I'm not going to get too low because I don't want to mess up the heavy sienna that we put on the boots. So I'm just going to focus mostly on the... Um, on the upper areas. And then with a finer brush, I'll come in and do a bit more. Oh, noticed an area I didn't do metal. The inside of that knee pad. Getting under here is a little tough. Yeah, you find fun ways to kind of get into those nooks and crannies and cracks. If anybody has any questions about Vallejo paint, feel free to ask them as well. Okay, so that's pretty good. Once that starts to dry, I'll be able to see if there's any areas that I missed in there. Um, of course, there's areas in the bottom I missed because I'm going to go back with a finer brush. Do the other boot. Actually excited to do this base. The, the snow effects that we use for Vallejo are really cool. I've used I used them actually on the Remoraz um, mini, the adult Remoraz with kids, Nolzer's mini. Okay, and the wash is pretty much dry on all of it, which is great means that we can dry brush real soon on those areas. We definitely don't want to dry brush over wet paint. Just makes a big mess. Sorry, over wet wash, I should say. Or wet paint for that matter. Dry brushing really requires that everything's wet, as does washing ahead of time. I 
many of you folks featured um, black dragons, or so not black dragons, what am I saying? Have any of you folks featured frost giants in your campaigns? Love to hear. You can sound off on the comment in the chat. Okay, so I'm not going to use this big brush for the other areas uh, and to get in tight. I'm going to use a smaller brush, make sure that I get the coverage I need. Make sure that you rinse your brushes, folks. Get a lot more life out of them. And then like a brush soap is good too, after the fact. Now I'm just gonna go with the number one, the Leho brush and just, and these are the synthetic kind of everyday Vallejo brushes. I have sable Vallejos that I actually haven't tried yet. I really should, but I haven't. These, these synthetic ones are pretty great and affordable but I definitely will try those. All right. Just making sure I get all the little areas, catch all the fur. This fur will probably be actually fairly dirty too, I'd imagine. Being so close to the ground and having him walk around, maybe we'll do some like weathering with mud and dirt at the bottom of his boots because I, I would think that they would, they would just be pretty filthy. As he kind of trunces around the sword coast. That is even a word, trunces. I think I just made that up. What's the word I'm looking for? Not trunces? I don't know. Okay. I do find sometimes base coating is a little daunting. Um, it seems like, you know, you go forever and it doesn't look great. It kind of looks just like paint by number sort of. But then as soon as that base coat's done, you start to use your washes and adding dry brushing and mid-tones and highlights and just really starts to come together. It, it, it's so important to get the base coats correct, color selections. It just makes your life so much easier after that. Having solid base coats is really important, in my opinion, anyways. Others may differ. But that said, though, I mean, you know, I really kind of blast through base coats and, and just, and I just want to get it onto the miniature to get to the fun part. Some people might love base coating. For me, it's. A means to an end. Having a hard time getting back here. There we go. Cool. So fun. Kind of glad I didn't choose one of the Frost Giants for <laughs> the Origins uh, tutorials because I don't think we'd have time to finish them in two hours. We're 25 minutes left, and we're not close. Like I said, in two weeks, we'll continue this guy and show you how to do all the rest of them. That'll be the fun, interesting stuff. The heavy brown, not too concerned about it kind of bleeding over onto the shoulder pad there because, again, we're going to do metal rim borders on it. So then just roughing in all of the fur with some heavy brown. I think it's going to be a decent base coat and give it some warmth. I do want it to look and feel different than the skull, but he's really coming along, this harsh nag. Okay, fur gone. And then 
and then just for on his other arm. Almost done base coating, folks. I think we can finish the base coat before the end of the stream. Let's find out. Not sure what that is. I think that's a piece of fur. So I'm just going to paint that like fur. Makes sense that it is. Just a longer piece hanging down. Right? That looks like a longer piece for hanging down. Why not? Not sure what else it would be. Could be. Okay. Almost done the heavy brown. Ooh, all right. Sort of a marathon base coating. Got it. Done. All right. So we're going to let that sit. Looking good. Looking good. That base coat of heavy brown is just drying. We're going to let that dry. I think I'm going to base coat the beard now that the, all the kind of the surrounding area is done. And I think I want to base coat the beard with stone wall gray. Or do I want heavy blue gray? I think I want heavy a blue gray, I'm imagining. I think that that'll be a decent base, base coat. It's kind of a darker gray, but not too dark. And I'm going to use the number one brush. I don't want to use the large one because now we have lots of kind of areas that we've now added washes to that we don't want to have to redo if we don't have to. So I'm going to be fairly careful. And one thing too, one trick that I use um, is that in order to get kind of into recesses and not mess them up is I start kind of not right at the recess. You don't want to jab your paintbrush in there, but I'll start here, for example, and then I'll, here, I'll bring it nice and close to the camera here. And then I'll ease my way into the edge. That way, you have a lot more control over how far it go out it goes. Just a little tip there. Because if you try and go right at the edge, chances are you're going to overshoot it and overpaint. And then you're in a bit of a pickle because it's difficult to kind of recover from that sometimes. So just ease into it if you can. And then we're going to work this up to a kind of a white beard color through Stonewall Gray. Actually, probably some blue wash to give it a bit of a really cold kind of feel. And then make sure I don't brush onto his lip here. Just want to get the beard. side of the beard here. This is fun. This part. Again, trying not to overbrush onto the areas we've already painted. Now it starts to get important. Overbrushed a little bit. Oops, it's okay. 
we're going to cover that with the lining around the armor anyways. This is going to be the tough part here, so I'm going to ease up into the beard area like that. And then try again. See, I'm just allowing the bristles to spread. When I place it in that area, I'll place it like this and then just let the bristles kind of do their work and go where they need to go into the recesses. I got a little over onto the skin, but that's okay. That's an easy fix because we're still just on base coat for the face and the skin so far. There we go. Pretty much, oh yeah. That is the beard. Question, is the base coat, is the base layer always a darker color than your highlight or dry brush? And your rune asks. That's a great question. Um, I That's how I paint. I like painting darker to light. Um, I'm trying to think if, so no, actually, so not always the case. Some cases, and this is when washing, so I will, if I'm in a hurry and I wanna do flesh real quick, I'll do like a light flesh tone and then do like a flesh wash and then you're getting the natural shadows in one and mid-tones in one kind of go. Um, but for me, I often use a darker base than the highlighter dry brush. Uh, what I do be, what you do want to be careful is that you don't want it to be so dark that the wash that you use doesn't make a difference. And so you want it, I use almost mid-tone bases so that when I add the wash, it becomes kind of a dark base, and then I'm going to highlight and dry brush after that, if that all makes sense. Okay, um, that is done. Fur is done. All right, we have 15 minutes left, folks. Can we finish up the base coats on this so that we're all set next week? What do you think? All we have to do really still base coat wise is the belt, I think. I think we just have the belt to go. But he's looking pretty good. I'm not gonna bother with the base yet. The base is gonna be done. We'll do it at the end of the next session. And hopefully two hours next time is enough to finish them completely. And again, he's a little lighter than I want him to be right now. But remember that as we add um, washes, it's going to darken things down a bit. But I didn't want him to be too dark either. And I wanted to give it lots of kind of color variation. But you can see how we added that. And those washes are really doing nice things on the, on the armor already. Okay base coating the belt. With the belt, I'm going to use the heavy blue-gray. Same color we're using now. A little heavy blue-gray in here uh, because I'll use a wash, probably a black wash after that, and that will darken it right down. And then, there, and then there's a bit of a kind of um, complement to his beard as well, which will help balance the character. I like to do that when I paint. I like to add like complementary areas so that so that the paint job and that the creature looks balanced in some ways. Like if I'm going to do something light on top, I want to do something kind of light on the bottom and not next to each other so that there's some again some delineation and colors and visually, at, at a glance, you can kind of separate the, um, the areas of the miniature easily. And I would suggest, guys, because we have a week in between these, actually two weeks between, if you folks want to, you can uh, run to your local, not run, you don't have to run right now. <laughs> you can walk or Uber or drive or moped or whatever your preferred method of transportation is uh but i would i would head to your local game store or order um this guy online and um but make sure you support your local game stores folks only if they don't have it run try and get online um 
But if you grab him in the next week, and then you can base code him next week, and get him to the point where we are now, and then in two weeks, we can kind of get and do the next kind of stage of stuff together. That'd be great if we could do that. I also want to get to a point where I am um, where I'm posting the colors that I'll be using ahead of time so that you folks, and if that's something you want, I'd love to hear you uh, your thoughts on that in the, in the, in the chat. But if, if, you know, you guys prefer, do, do you prefer watching the VOD after and taking your time or is painting live with us something that uh, appeals to you? And if so, then we can kind of release our paint colors and the minis ahead of schedule so that you folks can join us on the actual nights of that could be fun. Nurun says, "Do you s you use wet blending, and what is your experience with the technique?" Um, I don't do a lot of it. I'll be honest. Um, I know there's a lot of different techniques, and there are master painters out there that do an amazing job of it. Um, I've never have. I, I love to take kind of, you know, I like to get my my minis to kind of tabletop quality. And by that, I mean um, good enough that they look great at like, you know, one to two feet and they're on the table. And I find if I were to wet blend, I'd take too long and then it just takes too long for me to get minis on the table. So for me, wet blending uh, is something I'd, I'd love to learn more and I'd love to practice more. I've done a little bit of it, but not enough to, to kind of be a master. Um, but uh, but that's something I'd love to dig into. Maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll try some of that on a on a stream sometime. That could be fun. That's another thing too. If there's techniques that you folks want to learn, or special like things you want us to cover and try, then let's do that too. And we can all learn together. I do want a wet palette though, because that'll help. All right, so the belt is gray as um, Rick suggested it should be. And that is all of the base coats. Now you can see as I've kind of been manipulating the mini, we have some paint that is rubbing off kind of on the extreme edges of some stuff, but that's okay too, because we'll be going over that with midtones and highlights and washes and you know, covering up a lot of that anyways. So I think I might glue this arm in next time. Maybe not. It might help to have it separate. But this is the base coated Frost Giant slash Harshnag miniature. You guys can see it's looking pretty good so far, I think. Um, you know, and we've used just, I don't know how many colors on this so far, but like one, two, three, four, five, five colors five or six colors folks and a black wash so far and it's already to this point like some people would love to just get him on the table like this and it'd be enough put some washes on it and and that's it nothing wrong with that nothing wrong at all we've got 10 minutes left what should we do with that 10 minutes what do i want to do here i don't want to get into Maybe I'll start base coating some of the leather straps and stuff. So I'm going to do some of the leather straps on his bracers. Because I, I don't want to get into blending or anything that takes a lot of effort and then abandon it kind of mid technique. So let's do these straps here. I'm going to do these little, these straps with heavy brown still. this and then we'll use a sepia probably a sepia wash and leather brown to highlight those and bring them out more like that and again it's all about separating colors and delineation and making sure that you know when you when you're painting something on that you're thinking about how the colors kind of interplay with the ones around it. Are they complementary? Are, 
display contrasting? You know, do I have, are they interesting? Are they fun? Like all of those, all of that kind of stuff. For me, and for everybody has different tastes. So for me, I like realistic. So I, I look at it and I'm like, okay, if this were to be real leather or, you know, um, a real frost giant, uh, how would how would that look? How would the skin react? So yeah, so that's a leather strap there. Put that down. And I'll do the ones on his other arm. And then once that's done, we'll just go over what we'll be covering in the next part. And then we'll go from there. And you guys can enjoy the rest of your weekend and then we can see you guys next Sunday, or next week, I should say, from Origins. Actually, tomorrow night, you guys can catch our live stream if you want. But after that, starting on Thursday, we'll be live from Origins Game Fair. And Origins Game Fair is in Columbus, Ohio. Hope we get to see some of you folks there. Okay, this is looking good, folks. Looking good. All right, so now I've base coated the uh, the straps. You can see the straps on his arms. Again, adds a little bit of delineation. I'm actually going to do this strap here too. And then by using different washes, we can make them look a little different from other areas around it. And there we go. We'll give it one more turn. The base coat, because it is done, except for the base, which we'll do all together afterwards, which I like to do. Here we go, little turn of base coated Harshnag. We've also added a black wash to the dark brown leather areas, so the heavy sienna areas and the metal, including his weapons and his bracers, which you can see how really cool it makes the bracers look on there with that wash and the chainmail really pops. So next time what we'll do is we're gonna cover um, washing the rest of uh, the fur and the bone um, texture. We'll also wash and highlight all of the straps and all of this padding here. We'll be using sepia wash a lot in that uh, for the leather areas as well as leather brown and some plague brown to bring out highlights. The skull will make it look like aged bone. It's gonna look really cool. And then also like a black wash on the belt and maybe some blue wash on the belt so it has a bit of a blue tinge to it. My favorite thing to do is skin um, or one of my favorite things. So we'll be going through the skin and making sure that he looks really awesome. And that'll take some time in itself. Maybe this is a three session mini, I don't know. Um, but that will all be a lot of fun. And we'll do the edges and all of that kind of stuff. One thing I really wanna do and show you guys how to do is I'm gonna make this ax glow. Um, we're going to use some blues in order to kind of give it a blue glow. It's going to glow really cold uh, like Gert's Great Axe would be. We're also going to make the glyphs on his uh, armor and on his bracers because it's magical armor. That's going to glow as well. And then because it glows from this area and maybe even on the pommel, I'm going to cast some blue light on the rest of him too, which will be fun. And that would probably cast light along his arm maybe around the front here a little bit onto the skull. Uh, and uh, that is always interesting to do. And then also would probably cast a little blue glow onto his bracers as well. Or maybe we'll do that in the next one with some airbrushing. I don't know. We will decide from there. Um, and then also just surrounding glow on his bracers. And then on the base, we will paint it gray and we will... Um, finish it with some Vallejo snow effects from the environment effects, 
which is this cool bottle right here. Um, and we will uh, add some grass tufts to make it look like kind of like an Arctic tundra. Really, really exciting. It's going to be so much fun. Thanks so much again, guys, for watching. My name is Jason. This is episode five of Nolzer's Marvelous Tutorials with Realm Smith. We're going through all the D&D Nolzer's minis by WizKids uh, and painting them with Vallejo paints. We've already done all the four young dragons. You can catch those on the D&D YouTube and our YouTube as well as on our Twitch at slash RealmSmithTV. Check out our live stream tomorrow night, uh, 7.30 Eastern time. We'll be playing Storm King's Thunder. Um, and then starting Thursday to Sunday, we're at Origins and we'll be live streaming on our Twitch channel Again, twitch.tv slash realmsmith for the entirety of the show. Um, if you like this, make sure that you follow our channel as well as the D&D channel. Uh, and make sure that you head over to YouTube if you want those VODs and you subscribe and hit the little bell icon. And you'll be notified anytime that we go live um, with the VODs so that you guys can kind of catch up and paint all your dragons and your harsh nag once he's done. Man, this guy is so cool. I'm very excited. I've wanted to paint this mini for a while. And now here we go. So, so awesome. If you want to check out our adventure box, our monthly adventure box, you can head to our website at www.realmsmith.tv and you can subscribe there. Thank you so much, folks, for joining us. It's been a wonderful night and we look forward to seeing you guys. This coming Sunday, like I said, there is no live tutorial. We will be rerunning one of the uh, Origins ones in Sunday night's spot from 5 to 7 Eastern. And then the following week, we'll be finishing off Harshnag. Uh, in all of his glory. You guys have a wonderful night. Thank you so much. Peace.